Split River Junction Battle Axe Psalms, Proverbs and Prophecies, a trilogy of novels written by Paulie Badan, as if to recreate out of time, place, and the all but forgotten transparencies of the Daughterlands pilgrimages there toward almost nightly and back anew repersonaged therefrom. The vibrant metal land was one both attenuated and daily transfixed by the coexisting ages of steel, iron, and, and um, bronze, brass, and all other others before and since they'd been settled. The very sky above them seemed to walk alongside the Daughterland pilgrims with bowed heads and prayerful silence as might belonging to another Daughterland's ungatherable tribes. Too numerous to name sake, walked before and aft the Baylet's waters, ships of thrown up sails and missive masts mass in league with one another's intricate journeys none but the very returns from would ever known. The Daughterland was known not for her industries, but instead she would always be coined, stamped, and chronicled by her artistries as such. There lived one man among all the others inhabiting this much prophesied Daughterland who was native to neither discovery nor frontiersmanship, but was a living recreation of the two as one and same and dichotomies weltering leaves alongside vast winding cobbled roads portraitured upon highway walls by artisans no one living before since or after had ever known. This man was named Medrick, and he was by trade and temperament a carpenter, Christianized by parents in the baptismal waters and flames, both day and night. Nine of them lived on a seven-acre farm of pasture and seed, and Medrick was the eldest of seven brothers and three daughters. No book of Job. tragic to bear alone upon Calvary's cross of unpolishable wood, as Denmarkian ears might listen to the footsteps numbering Medrick among and other side their league, the simplest of his brethren and, and uh, sister in salt were as well the most convoluted by birthstone and bread, hearthstone, fire, and stoke were one of Medrick's arts and letters, and he came and went each next and preceded morning by horse and mule team trek of hand sewn carriage, carriage, carriage. The daughterland to which he belonged was one of vast landscapes thrown into light and shadow, framed in every painter's landscapes, time and place ever brought forth from history and womb. Neither Ides of March nor the stealthy sword of night, clothed day, knew the daughterland to be lettered among nemnazine and smoke, flames and sticks sitting across a table of song from one another, pressing coins and playing chess. The daughterland knew for her rolling fields, rustics, and inland cities, the ten law code transfigured by higher potentialities of peace mercy and kindness. She knew a land so beautiful and richly wove of creation's threads that every door, gate, and half-open window drew Drake from the passing moments and wooming with pen, ink, and page, her ageless leaf of simplest cloth, trembling upon universal tree root and bow, brought back and forth from each village square market. Medrick, Early one springlet morning was was, was, um, 
was working with pleasure his father's time-worn kiln, transmuting varied metals while he scripted in his open journal the last decade's adventures he shared with his kinfolk and friends. Time and place seemed that auspiciously omni-transfixed and undateable day's slowly climbing sun, which set to dancing self-incongruent shadow an ageless personage to transubstantiate outside one another the bread and wine to table as well the days and pastured needle and threaded cloth his beautiful faced mother drew cloth therefrom as she drew the deepest waters from verse wove metrics seeming to wrap chaptered knuckles upon the homesteaded near to door across the room where within both he and she sat inking verses and elsewise knitting candle wax cloth to market and back through the party mysterious prudential to riverbank mercies songlet sparrow perching across the way from frontiersmanship epistemologized by the fruit basket wicked psalms salted into afterwardly proverb eternally of the day to hand as a man wrapped in translucent navigations nautical slowly labored silent past their open gate bearing aloft the lampstead levy profundity left by the unlocked door by its only meted prose unrecorded as if by heavens accepting by heavens gate can't keep peter Medrick's father and second-in-line brother Abrams were both saddling and combing the bonlit horse and mule, as with a brethren watching and wordless Jesus walk along thickly islanded oceanus, singing to Martha and Mary's shared and salted bringing to the first light of day dark omnipotentials, singular many and few, Unified, unicyclic, and unsung, accepting by grace tabled hymnals old as punctuation's first spoken sentence, soon taking leave of her windlelet thread and needle, Medrick's elder train of thought mother brought to a distant kindred king, thrown gold, gold trim poverty, afterward and prologue her songlet winged personage as might a disembodied literalism dressed in maniform metaphors. Indecipherable and instantaneous recognition cried battle the groom and bride altar and rail. Medrick knew his father and brother were soon taking leave. The sky above them only a few or three moments previously began beating a stick and drum gathering of labyrinthine keyboard clouds. To the Beatrice all men seek their eternal lives through and across from, from birthstone philosophies, ever-branching ideals. All was momentarily quiet. The father and son all aborted their hand-hammered carriage and slowly setting into the near-lit village market, spoke as they drove alongside the unlocked gates of garden fort homesteads. Not one word to each other so much as a solitary word. Jesus wept. He, in the course of his own brief years, knew for the two homes that housed his travels, the manger where within his birth took vased rose to table, and the hilltop cross where unspeakable torments, where unspeakable torments were, were, were eaten only by a vinegar sponge. Medrick, stepping from his parents' house, waved by the roadside, his vanishing kindred wing and wheel. There was an article of great and awestruck and profoundly intricate beauties that Medrick kept under lock and key of absolute secrecy deep in the hollows beneath the wine cellar. Each noon of day he descended the twelve steps that led him by raised lantern light into the large and damply wove rows of corked and glass bottled wines of every known import far and wide as if the crisscrossing ships that landed them fought in after rural lands and towered stacked cities where instead of the ancient press coins of a Caesar that never until this very day knew birth into earthly life 
from any woman's thrift-winged womb. As Medrick descended one by one the polished wood steps, his heavenly creator from high above his steps, bent an ear to the steeps and valleys of his sword sheathing thoughts, lucid, trained. No one wished to put his kindred back into the light thirsting shadows. No one willing any one of them storm as shelter, nor sheltered chessboard checkering storm upon the glass breath board whereof was stationed very pieces seemingly moved of their own living accord. No one knew what congress of invention was the object of Medrick's daily labor of love. But I am now calling forth from the starlit nights to sing places, a plaintive candle wax line of winding coast coastline shore. I will walk the remaining sentences, paragraphs, and bell towered chapters across, drawing from the formless earthland clay a second cousin to the intricate dawns that beat twilight, twilight drums of driftless smoke. I will name him Bartholomew. He will marry a woman born of labyrinth and water turned wine, the two being angelically created husband and wife. Labyrinthine, labyrinth inseminates water turned wine's womb with universal womanhood, who speaks every language ever known to humanity since the first human beings walking Eden's opulent garden grasped epilogging the forbidden fruits eating in the forbidden fruits eating the grasping of the first two epiphanizing with mercy's grace to table the slow evolving of the human soul each day as she becomes less and less translucent realizing into human form she will walk with Frederick down the rows of corked and bottled wine as would a starlit sky above a shot that amazing eyes show him through and across ancient cities wove a vast future days brought into spiritually elucidate quintet juxtapositions weighing chemistry alongside their own augmentations on scales of soliloquy unbalanced blindfolded scales of lion lamb justice as Patrick enters her waiting womb to be recreated from fire, air, earth, and water, his first father and mother will entering universal womanhood's water turned wine womb also will become the very landscapes across which they will walk, eat, sleep, and live their unilinear as well as nonlinear life through.